Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you are curious to know how exactly all of these transformer based models work, then I would highly suggest going through this free resource which is called as Transformer Explainer. Not only it visually and graphically shows you how exactly the whole flow of your input through transformation to output works in this transformer model which is almost every model these days we are looking at whether it be OpenAI's GPT models or Gemini models, Anthropic's Claude models or Llama models or Mistral models except a few of the exceptions in the popular arena most of the models these days are transformer models. Before transformer models the way these text generation model, models work was that they were just predicting the next word. But in very simple words, what this transformer based architecture has done, which has revolutionized the AI by the way, is that instead of just going to the next word or predicting the next word, it can take input the sequence of words, then by applying the mechanism of self attention, it can predict or it can go through longer context of text and then there are various other art architectural changes which it has done. I'm a big believer in the fact that if you want to really learn a technology you need to learn at least its architecture and how it works inside out and I'm not talking about becoming a linear algebra expert or mathematician or statistician I'm just talking about knowing what exactly happens whenever you give a text prompt or an image prompt to a model. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how this transformer explainer work. And then you can go through this website because I'll be dropping the link to it in video description and then you can play around with it. So what happens here is, as you can see at the very top, this is the example. You can simply remove this or just use your own if you like. It is, by the way, it is using GPT-2 model behind the scene and GPT-2 was one of the first um, pioneer, pioneer model from OpenAI. It's a very small model only with 124 million parameters and I think the size is around 600 meg and it get downloaded into your browser cache. But the architectural components and principles in GPT-2 are just more or less same as we are using today in lot of the state of the art models okay so for example i am giving it a text prompt like fahad is an ai youtuber and that's it so if i click on generate let's wait for it you see this is the whole flow from left to right so the next token it has predicted is this okay so let's change the randomness so randomness uh, the low value mean the response of the model will be deterministic it won't be as creative or random but if you increase the value it means that it will be quite creative so i'm just increasing it let's click on generate you see as i increased it it already has predicted the next one so let me remove it and then i'm just going to click on generate now Let's see what it does. So you see this is end is highlighted towards the very end. So this is the output. Now the question which we are trying to learn here is how did transformer model reach to this end value here, the output one. So what happens is uh, from the very start, there are three components of transformer model. First, you give it an input text which we did that is our prompt it gets converted into numerical representation or vectors or embeddings there are these two words for it so if you click here or you just simply click here you see this f got converted into this numerical representation or embedding and then similarly all the tokens in my prompt got converted into numerical representation and then once that's done positional encoding was done which means that it selected which character comes where in the text now the vector dimension or you know the matrix of it is of this 1768 
So this is what it is. And so all it is doing is text input is being divided into smaller units called tokens, which can be words or subwords. <clears throat> These tokens are converted into embeddings, which capture the semantic meanings of the words. Then we have transformer block, as you can see here, whole stuff. There are two layers here or two blocks here. First is this multi-head self-attention or attention mechanism. Second one is MLP, which is multi-layer perceptron layer. Now let's first see what exactly this multi-head self-attention is. This is a core component of transformer block. It enables tokens to communicate with other tokens and that captures the contextual information and relationship between words. Because you see, YouTuber is a different word, Fahad is a different word, it could be anyone. So now, this self-attention tries to figure out which word is related to which word in what sense, the whole relationship thing. So this is what this attention mechanism is doing. Now, this mass uh, this self-attention allows the model to generate sequence by focusing on relevant parts of the input while preventing access to future tokens. And a lot of mathematics happens there. But the key, uh, one important concept to remember here is this QKV or Curie key value thing. So what happens here is that self-attention mechanism is enabling the model to focus on relevant part of the input sequence. This is very important point, so please remember it. Now, Curie um, and key and value are three vectors. And they are just representing the text which it is going to put attention to. Curie, so if you just think of an example, Curie is your search text, right? So for example, if you're searching in your browser, you're typing in some search result or I just gave this sentence here, Fahad is an AI YouTuber, that is our query. And then browser goes and search something and then it comes up with the each web page, right, which has, which contains that search text. So the title of that web page or search result would be key and the actual value what it found would be value. So this is what query key value is. So whenever you give it some text prompt, it goes into its own training data and then from there it only returns query key value which puts only attention to those parts in its training data which contains some relationship, some mention of my prompt in very simple words. So by using these QK value, QKV values, the model can calculate attention scores which determine how much focus each token should receive when generating predictions. How good is that? So, and then of course, there are a lot of maths happen there where um, uh, some dot product of Curie, Q, Curie and key matrices determine the alignment of each Curie. And then a mask is applied there uh, to the upper triangle, triangle of attention matrix. And then there is a lot of maths involved. And then they also do some soft max function, but, and I'm talking about this MLP layer. So for example, if I click here and just show you MLP and so this all this MLP is doing here is it is trying to enhance the model's representational uh, capability. The MLP block consists of two linear transformations with um, a GALU activation function in between and you can read more about it if you click here and then they also have given very um, fine explanation so this is the activation function to neuron outputs and these are the outputs which are coming from our self-attention mechanism and the first linear transformation increases the dimensionality of the input the second linear transformation reduces the dimensionality back to original size of 768 which we saw in the embedding one so unlike the self-attention mechanism the mlp uh, process tokens independently and simply map them from one representation to another and then it creates the output probabilities so after the input has been processed through all transformer blocks, the output is passed through the final linear layer to prepare it for token prediction. This layer projects the final representation into more than 50,000 dimensional space where every token in the vocabulary has a corresponding value called logit, which is the raw output. And then 
any token can be the next word so this process allows us to simply rank these tokens by their likelihood of being next word and then on this logit a softmax function is applied to convert the logit or the raw it output into probability distribution that sums to one so and this is our um, final result which you can see towards the end the probabilities and then on the basis of this score model selects the output here and then there are few other things for example um, the final step is to generate the next token by sampling from this distribution and there are a lot of sampling techniques such as temperature and then you know top p top k and then all that stuff which you can use so for me the best thing is that you can do a lot of things with it um, especially around learning how exactly this thing works even if you don't understand how these softmax functions are working internally how this dot operations are being done like this one so you see this is how it is qkv weights are being used and multiplied if you even if you don't know these vectors and all these um, statistics maths formulas at least you know what is happening under the hood at a high level and that is all you need to do so that's it guys a really stellar effort by the people who have created it so hats off to them i will drop the link to it in video description play around with it let me know what do you think if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching